Hi, this is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche. This is my second attempt at video number 27. So yesterday I made a video, I pieced it together, I uploaded it, I watched most of it, and then I started, anyway, I started to watch it and I found out that my phone had rang and part of the phone conversation was on the video and it was uh, about a patient in the hospital. I was like, oh my God, this is a uh, HIPAA violation. So <laughs> I deleted the video, which thank God you can delete it immediately. It was probably up for less than 30 seconds. <laughs> and I edited out that entire part and tried to re-upload and then YouTube said error. So I said, okay. Let me try this again. So last night I set my computer, went to sleep. This morning it says unable to upload video because you've already uploaded it. So my feeling on that is probably they recognize parts of it. There's some internal prohibition for uploading twice. So I said, okay, let's delete the whole video and start again. So this is episode number, video number 27, part two. Okay. And I am on call today, so if my phone goes off, I, I will take it, and I apologize for the interruption, because I'm sure a phone going off is not fun. First, let's talk about a finish. So, it's a short finish, because after Louisa Snow, I, I didn't want to start a new giant project, uh, although I did, but I, I needed some something in between. So this is Lucy Beam Love & Stitches. I'm pretty sure I showed this to you in my other video just to review. It's done on Anubis, which is by Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, and she doesn't say what she used as a backing, uh, but there is rickrack all around the edges. I used uh, E-Design Linens Halloween Din Halloween Halloween's Night. Okay, just to let you know that's the name of the designer. And here's the linen. And here's the finish. And you can't see that because there's too much light behind it. But here all sort of spooky. Is it up? Yep, yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> so let's try that again. That's funny. Let's try that again. So Halloween's night. Here you go. Can you see it? All right. So I used pretty much the called for threads except for this white. Uh, DMC white was called for and I wanted more of a variegated white. So I changed it out. I already we just. Uh, put away the thread so I don't remember which white it was, but it was a Weeks Dye Works white. Maybe uh, Roasted Marshmallow. That's not Weeks, it's cast, but Roasted Marshmallow, I think I put in there. Just to give it a little more variegation. I don't know if that comes across in the video, but... E-Designs Linen is no longer made. I said that before. Um, this is 32 count, so easy to work with because it's got, it's, it's got to be a Zweigart base because it does have some, uh, it, it's got that softness of Zweigart and pretty, and evenness, but uh, I think it's a little on the stiffer side because of the dyes, that's all, and I would not wash this linen, it is definitely hand dyed and fabulous. So then the decision was what to do for the edging, and I decided I wanted pom-poms. So this, these are by Dames of the Needle called Peeps Meadow. I'm just going to show you the package. And here's, here's what it looks like. It is actually not black. It is dark greenish black, although it looks black when you put it up against the fabric, but here. I just want you to get the color. Can you see that color? All right. So, so we, I decided this would be, I actually uh, uh, messaged Elizabeth Toledo and asked her what her thought was and she suggested this. She actually suggested 
this fabric, which is called uh, Dried Acorn, which I don't, I ordered because I wanted to try her suggestion, and I'm not crazy about it with the pillow. It didn't do anything for me. So we'll save that, although it's awesome, we'll save it for something else. Knowing I wasn't sure about that, I also ordered two more. One is called Canned Pumpkin Velvet, and the other one is called Da Vinci's Charcoal. So I put both of these up with my project on the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche page. And apparently the overwhelming majority of people did like the gray one, and so do I. I think the gray is going to look awesome with as the backing to the pillow. Again, it's only the backing, but I, I really am pretty... Uh, I like to make sure the finishing is, is proper. Um, and this around the edges, this beautiful edging. So I think that's going to look really nice. I am not making this pillow, although some of you are like, oh, you can do it. No. Um, it's got to be too perfect for that, so I'm not making the pillow. I'm going to bring it to... I am going to bring it to the cross stitch cupboard where the finisher is amazing and she's going to make this pillow perfect. Once again, Lucy Beam Lovin' Stitches, All Hallows Eve Heart. Quite a few uh, local needlework stores have this and uh, she also has her own Etsy shop. I'll put a link below to the Etsy shop just so uh, you can see what she has. I'm always, um, I do like when people buy from their LNS because I think it's important to give the business to the local stores, otherwise they do not exist. And the local stores are a place where people can gather and stitch together. And without that, and, and get their supplies and so forth, and we really need to preserve the local stores that are still here. So many closed. Cross Stitch definitely declined at one point. And I think it's definitely, it's rebounded. Why has it rebounded? Well, I was listening to NPR and there was an R uh, store. I don't like NPR, first off. I think it's very biased news. But with that said, I do like NPR because it is uh, all news and uh, some of it is, is quite good. And also you've got international news and uh, you get some interest stories. So and Science Friday with Ira Plato, which is which is great, too. So anyway, back on track. I was listening to NPR and they spoke about a renaissance of craftsmen. So people are buying old anvils, those big old cast iron anvils, which my husband has two that he inherited from his father. In fact, one's like this big, it's huge. People are buying those, they're buying old machinery, um, the old woodworking tools, the hand tools, because working with your hands and creating furniture and all, all kinds of handicrafts is on its way back. Now this was about men. So extrapolating to women, uh, quilting's back, sewing's back, uh, cross stitch is back, knitting and crochet are back with a vengeance, and uh, it's amazing. There's new designers now, uh, the stores that are out there, most of them are thriving. The cross stitch cupboard, uh, she does pretty well, I think. Uh, I know that she can always use more business, so but it is the uh, nearest cross-stitch store to my home, even though it's almost an hour away. And I go down about once a month to stitch with the, with the girls there and, uh, and the guys. And I hope, uh, I hope people buy from her. It might be a few dollars more. Or what I have found is, you know, floss is maybe 10 or 10 cents more. A chart pretty much is about the same price, if anything, 50 cents. I mean, we're talking very small amounts of money. And I think, I think that's great. It's enough, it's for me, it's worth spending. Uh, I have to excuse me, I have a cold today. So, anyway, uh, 
I'll put a link to the vintage cross stitch niche. Uh, anything that you see here for the most part she can get. She does not sell Dames of the Needle. So Dames of the Needle does have her own um, Etsy store and I think she is sold on Kitten Stitcher sells a lot of her stuff on her site and probably some of the other um, needle shops sell it. I don't, I'm not going to talk about other local needlework stores because I just don't know them well enough. So that's a finish. Now let's talk about a start. So there was a big fail on <laughs> Harriet Salt only because I think I bought the wrong color. I bought uh, a color called Tudor Red, which I don't, yes, I'm sorry, called Cinnabar, which looks red, right? Doesn't that look red to you? But when I did it on the fabric, it doesn't look red. Now, this is a mixture of Cinnabar and Schoolhouse Red. Cinnabar is the brownish looking stuff, and right next to it is Schoolhouse Red. You see it? It's much redder. So I wanted a red sampler, so I'm going to return, I hope she takes it back, all the cinnabar, and I'm going to use the schoolhouse red. I'm just going to hold them up so you can see the difference. A lot of people are contemplating doing Harriet Salt. This is 56 count fabric. It's Weigart Kingston fabric. And I am able to stitch on it, which is remarkable because it's just remarkable, but I can. And if you're looking... I don't remember the name of this fabric. I think it's, I apologize, but it's a neutral fabric. Anyway, um, Gloriana Tudor Silk works well on 56 count fabric, and it is a breeze to work with. I use, this is my favorite high C dish, my favorite dish ever, <laughs> this, but this is, um, this is just some wax. It just happens to be in the shape of a, of a sheep. It's awfully cute, right? But I, I do wax the silk because my hands can be rough and it can, it can shred the silk a little. And this stuff is amazing. It works like a dream. If you use too long lengths, it will, uh, it will break. So you want to use shorter lengths. I use about lengths about that big. They don't seem long, but they, it works. And um, once again, I'm going to hold these up. This is Cinnabar. And this is Schoolhouse Red. If you want a browner sample, use Cinnabar. If you want Schoolhouse Red, use, if you want a red sampler, use Schoolhouse Red. I think this is awesome. This was my first choice. Um, I'm not going to say who recommended Cinnabar, but some people at their shop are using Cinnabar. And it must, maybe it's a different color fabric and it looks different or a different count, but for me it doesn't work. If you, if you notice, I have an error on this already. You see, I put an extra little piece here. I'm going to keep it. Nobody will ever notice it. They'll think it's supposed to be there, and it's my own little error. <laughs> so I hope you could see that. Can you see that? I <laughs> just put a little extra. It doesn't look bad, but anyway. So we got Harriet Salt just to review. Oops. Just to review what Harriet Saw looks like, I'm going to, this is the inside of this booklet. Pretty beautiful, right? And what's interesting, what's beautiful are the way she does her booklets. The paper is super high quality on every page. I'm not going to show you because, you know, it's not cool to show the, uh, the actual cross-stitch areas. But in every page she has a saying, a beautiful saying. Um, he who has faith has inward rev reservoir of courage, hope, confidence. What Faith is reason plus revelations. She has all kinds of quotes, faith, charity, um, by a variety of people. Uh, she has Thoreau, Luke James, George Mueller, Martina McBride, Muhammad Ali, I mean, she has everybody in here, a number of different quotes. Billy Graham, Lucille Ball, I, I did not realize she puts that in here. Nobody's ever said anything. And very nice. Martin Luther King, Tom Lehman, I don't even know who he is, but Mahalia Jackson, she was Gandhi. 
Anyway, she puts quotes. There's also this beautiful little card that she puts in here that you, um, go, you can mount on the back of your sampler that says stitched by, finish, and everything you used. So it's going to be a permanent record of your sampler, who made it, and so forth. It's going to create provenance to it. Okay. So that was a start, but I'm not working on that feverishly because uh, of one reason. Well, last night I got home late because I had to do some emergency surgery. And I was, my eyes and my body, everything was tired. So I decided to... Uh, to work on something else that was a little less, I didn't have to concentrate. And that is, um, that is Halloween greetings. I've been showing you the progression of picking the right threads, the right fabric, uh, and everything for this. So just to let you know, I am making that one into a pillow. And I did start this last night. This is just to show you. I hope you can see the back. Let's see. Is that better? Yeah. That's my start. I am extremely pleased with the way the threads look on the fabric. I have no idea what this fabric is. It's mystery fabric. Um, it feels like weak dye works, which in general I don't like to work with, but this has not been too bad. And it's got, it's not Confederate gray. I think that's what people would think. Um, it's gray with another color in it. I have no idea who made this fabric and, and what it is. It's about 30 count. And just to review, I'm using one of the called for flosses and one of the not. Called for flosses are only two. Um, Weak Style Works Jackal Lantern and um, Gassed Dark Chocolate. I love the Jackal Lantern. Love it. Didn't like the uh, dark chocolate on the on this uh, on this fabric, and I wanted something darker. So actually, this is onyx, which is which is a great color. It's not black. It's almost black. That's onyx. Okay, and just to show you the way they look together, let's see. I need something white. Well, anyway, here. <laughs> okay, um, and then I brought this vintage trimming. I'm not going to keep, I, I really should not keep this in here because it's going to get ruined, but my god, just so you can see it's vintage trimming. It's awfully long, but I think it's going to work. I got I to gotta keep this separate before it gets ruined. Excuse me while I help try to save my trimming. All right, I don't know what I was thinking. Oops. Putting it in the, uh, putting it in there. I also found some nice black lace. This is cheap stuff. It's machine made, um, but it's kind of neat. So I was thinking of just putting a little stripe of lace on the bottom. Can you see that? <laughs> just incorporating it somewhere. You might think it's too much with that trimming. I don't think so. The other idea I had was the lace with the rickrack, which is not a bad idea. But. So I started this. This is going to be a quick finish. If um, my call is not too busy today, I might even be able to finish it. It's a quickie. When I finish these charts, I tend to sell them. So, because what do I need the charts I've already done? <laughs> oh, and one more thing. I was thinking for the back, the back fabric that this pumpkin may or may not work. Um, it is, since that orange is a little on the variegated side, I think it does work. I'm not sure. I, I think maybe black, a black fabric. Or another option was I bought this fabric. It was listed as vintage. I don't know how old it really is. Look at it. It's awesome. You see all the, the faces? It's actually hilarious fabric. <laughs> I love it. it. I was thinking that this might work. I'm not sure about this. It might be too bright. This is a little more eerie and it, it might work for the backing. I'm not sure either. <laughs> so this is a big F, but I have two different options so far. And I have that unbelievable, beautiful lace stuff. 
One more project that should have been done, but it's not, is the Delaney Woods, Delaney Woods Treasures Floral Basket Drum Kit. Not made anymore, of course. I'm saving. I did cut the template out, just to let you know. <laughs> Oops. I see, but um, I certainly could sell it like that. Um, and I kept, I kept some of the extra linen, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, you could easily match up other linen for this. So anyway, Delaney drum kit. I hand sewed this and the way you put the, the walnut shells are, are you have to uh, actually poke a hole in your fabric, which intuitively drove me nuts to do, but I did. And then I made like a little funnel. She says to pack this really good and then um, sew this closed and I was going to put a little patch over it. But just so you get the idea, that's what the front's going to look like. I know it doesn't look good right now because it's not stretched properly and also this rickrack part is not done, which I think is, I don't know what you call this, but it's like a rickrack around it that you sew. I think once it's done, it's going to be great. I also pulled some buttons for it just to hopefully you could see them. Some sort of cool, and these are all old buttons, so let me throw those in there too. So Delaney Woods uh, Floral Basket Drum Kit, hand sewn by me, um, so far coming out okay. I can't wait to see what it's like. Um, just to let you know what this fat, what this, what this linen in? This linen is a, a not a color that I've ever seen before. I'm just going to show you the pieces. And the reason I save these pieces, and once again to put a patch on the bottom, is Redwood by Dames of the Needle. So it does not look like this. It's got a lot more variegation. But it's called Redwood by Dames of the Needle. And uh, the Delaney Woods Treasures does use a lot of Dames of the Needles. I will put a link below to her Etsy page. I've never seen it sold in the shop, but apparently it, it is because I, I Googled it to check. Um, stuffing that with the, with the funnel and making sure it's really jam-packed is going to be the hard part. I'm going to put a tray under it because I would only imagine those walnut shells are, gonna, are going to get everywhere. And the reason it's not finished is I ran out of walnut shells. And I was like, oh no, I want to finish this. So I did find them on Amazon, and the ones I found have some lavender in them, and they're supposed to be here today. Uh, I got the two-day shipping, so I can finish this today. This has to be finished, because it's one of those, like, eek, I ran through. Uh, by the way, uh, this is a thrift store find. It is a Universal Studios Harriet Potter mug. I love it. I'm not a mug collector, but I have a few that are pretty cool and this is one of them and it's huge which I love all right now on to some other projects okay so here's my other fail <laughs> I'm calling this a fail but it's not really a fail um this is Soar by Brenda Gervais let me pull this out because I think there's a glare. It's lovely, right? It's awesome. Apparently it's 2011 design. I don't know if anything with her ever really goes out of print, but this is uh, hard to find. Anyway, the called for, I, I pulled all the DMC for it, just to let you know. It's all DMC. Not in a neat bundle, but it's all the DMC for it. Called for. Called for fabric is Onyx, which I have. 30 count Onyx by Weak Style Works. Beautiful color. It's black, but again, it's, it's a beautiful black. I decided, man, I'm gonna do this. I don't like working on weeks. It's just, it's too hard for me to get tight and stretch. It just, not a stretchy fabric and it sort of drives me crazy. So I decided to do something different. So I bought hard stitch threads fabric called Carbon Melage in uh, 40 count. 
Okay, so it's beautiful fabric. I'll put a link to Heart Stitch Threads. Heart Stitch Threads is not available anywhere except for her website. It's absolutely beautiful fabric. It, it says 40 count. It even looks finer than that, so I'm not sure, but it says 40 count on it. So it's a fine 40 count, how about that? But she, uh, I bought this and I started to do it. And here's what I use. I use Mad Eyes, which are awesome. And I do it right over my glasses, which is pretty on the nerdy side, but it works for me. I couldn't see it, couldn't do it. I tried and it was frustrating me. I said, I'm not doing a 40 count. Let me pull out the 30 count. So I barely did a few stitches, pulled them out. And by the way, I did sell this fabric to some to somebody else because I decided that um, I'm not going to use it because I don't think I can stitch on it. For whatever reason, black, I can do the 56, but the black is, is one of those I, I'm having issues with. So I pulled out the Weeks Dye Works Onyx. Put a few stitches in it, decided, man, I cannot see these holes. I can't get it tight enough, like a drum, to really, you know, stretch it a little so I can see. I said, this is killing my eyes. I'm not doing it on this. Unbelievable. Two. And this is 30 count, which I usually have no issues with. Went online and found Zweigart Double Linen 25 count, which I, I do not believe is made anymore, okay? Found it and said, I don't want to work on Ada. I could do this on Ada, but it, I just am not a big Ada fan, but I found 25 count Dublin Linen. Um, this is Stiff Linen, which immediately is going to make it easier. Stiff Linen is much easier to, to stitch on than real soft linen. And you can see the holes very easily. You can even see through this a little bit. You're not going to see through it when it's done, but you can see through it now. So this afternoon, after I get back from rounding at the hospital, because <laughs> that's on my agenda today, I am going to restart this. Not that I wanted to restart another, start another project. Excuse me one minute while I go get a tissue. I will be back. I'm back. <laughs> I just had to get a tissue. Anyway, uh, I'm going to restart this on this 25 count. So, I learned something about black linen. I have issues with it. <laughs> and I understand other people do as well. But this, I can't wait to do this Brenda Gervais Soar because it is a beautiful, beautiful little mini sampler. It's not a big project. I should be able to do it relatively quickly. But I want to prove to myself that I can do this. Now, if I can't work on 25 count with these big holes, man, I, there's something wrong. So I should be able to do it. So that is Brenda Gervais Soar, once again, to be started on 25 count fabric. I think it'll look just fine. I'm going to start it with two threads. Um, that should be adequate. I don't think I'll need three, but if I need three, I'll do three. So we have a fail, not a fail, a color fail, but no color substitution. And for this, a fabric fail and a substitution. Okay, so let's, I don't have a lot of new finds, but I will show you whatever I have. This, um, I've never showed this to you before, although I think I've had this I found, I, I've had this put away, so I do want to show it. This back of this says, Made in the USA, 1942, Edward George Green, Morristown, New Jersey. So he made this in 1942. My feeling is the men were out to war in 1942. This was probably a kid. See the letters? It's awesome. It's a beautiful shelf. So pretty. Um, somebody had something sitting here, obviously for a long time, so you've got a different color, but that's okay. I think it gives it character. A true antique vintage item. This is going to go in my wall. I'm actually going to put it on the wall in my, um, one of the walls in my 
craft room right now, today or tomorrow. And then I'm going to put a small project on it. I'm not going to actually mount anything on this. It's just too awkward a shape, but I'm going to put maybe a project on here of some sort. But it's too cute not to. And um, I don't know if Edward George Green is still alive. That was 1942. It's a long time ago. Guy would be, depending on his age, he'd be in his 80s, probably minimum, even if it was a kid, 70s, 80s, 90s. And uh, Edward George Green, if anybody happens to know anybody by that name, let me know. <laughs> and I would love to give this back to his family. But it was a real vintage find, and it's beautiful. Beautiful antique working vintage shelf. And then I found this beautiful, this big box. This is a cedar box. <sighs> Smells so good. Smells like cedar. It is a smaller version of my big cedar, but my, my mini chest. For many, many years, people have used cedar to store linens. These are perfect for storing your linens. I think I'm going to sell this one with the idea that somebody certainly could make a project and put something on top, or they can just use it as a linen storage box um, because I have my big box. Uh, definitely not new. It's a vintage item. Could this be 50, 1950s or 60s? That would be my guess. I don't know. It's got a lot of character to it. It's not in perfect condition, but this is the perfect box to store your linen in. Once again, look at the inside. The inside's pristine. And um, I, it's very important to store your stuff. I was told not to store linens and plastics by somebody actually on my, on one of these videos that said that they heard it. Um, I don't know. I asked people at the Cross Stitch Cupboard and they said they don't really, they never heard of that. Plastic is, is, I just don't like plastic. And I think storing something in a linen, in a, um, in a cedar box will really keep it, it keeps it dry, you know, keeps out the humidity. And it also keeps out the bugs because it's a natural uh, bug repellent. So this is a cedar box I picked up for not too much money. I'm going to sell it for not too much money. Hopefully somebody uh, buys it off my site and uses it for their linen stash. This would probably hold quite a bit of linen. Probably at least 10, 15, maybe more pieces. Okay, so there we go. Um, this item this belonged to my grandmother. She had it on a table in her house and it was, uh, she, the table had a blue mirror on it. And apparently she got these at the, at the movie theater. They used to give these out for free, she told me, and she had a bunch of them. My mom gave me this one. I don't know where the rest are. It's imperfect. It has a little chip on the bottom, but that's okay. I'd like to get a flower frog and put it in here. Oop, I'm just taking one from another one and, and use it as a, a, flower, a scissor holder. Um, and all the more it's from my grandma. I don't really, we don't really have a lot of family heirlooms, but that, it's not much of an heirloom. It's not worth very much, but it reminds me of my grandma. So beautiful. And uh, my grandma came to this country in 1925, so this is truly um, vintage. She probably got this in the 1930s, late 20s, early 30s, I believe, she told me. But they used to give these out at the movie theater when you went for a movie. How lovely. Can you imagine nowadays? You don't get nothing. <laughs> You're lucky you get the opportunity to buy a drink. But that belongs to grandma, and I totally forgot about it, and I said, wow. I was looking at something else. Um, finds. I'm going to show you something. This is from Home Depot. Okay. This is a magnet on the bottom and a very strong magnet. Those are pins. <laughs> it was a coin that fell out. Your pins, 
you will never again have an issue with pins. Not only that, if you drop them, this magnet will pick them up. <laughs> so this is awesome for pins and needles. Home Depot, $5. You do not have to buy a fancy item. It's awesome, made of stainless. Just to let you know, it's a pins and needles thing. This was out of necessity. I um, dropped a whole bunch of needles on the floor one time. They got in between the cracks and everywhere. My husband gave me a magnet. I picked them all up and I, and I saw that my husband had one of these dishes for his nails. Just to show you the bottom is magnetized also so you can pick them up. And voila, the idea came. So I wanted to show you that. And everything sticks to it, including your scissors. <laughs> so, speaking of which, these two scissors came, um, I bought these on eBay at a bargain, bargain price. Not that I need more scissors, but one of, um, one of them is marked made in Germany, so we know these are good scissors. Good German scissors, really pretty. I probably will sell them on, because I don't need them, I have so many, um, uh, for a very reasonable price, because I got them for a reasonable price. I couldn't turn it up. These are really nice stork scissors in just about mint condition, because they definitely were not used. There's not even a mark on them. They are, there's a, these are cheap. These are really cheap scissors. But again, if somebody needs them, I'll, I might include this with a kit. Okay, what else to show you? I pulled a bunch of stuff out, I think. Let's see what else. Do I have anything else to show? Oh yeah, okay. I don't know if I showed you the Florida. I, I wanted to, again, continue with the theme of redesigning and making things your own. This is the Florida Sampler by Ginger and Spice. And I got this at the, um, I got this at the Cross Stitch Cupboard. It's awesome. What a great sampler that is. It's, it's got everything about Florida. It's got Seminoles. It's got the, um, this is the, the, it's got fish, all kinds of fish. It's got vacationers. It's got the moon person. It's got an orange tree. It's got um, it's St. Augustine. It's got the great, um, the, uh, the fort there. I mean, look at it. Everything, a lot of cool Florida stuff. And this, uh, the call for fabric, this is definitely old. And the reason I know it's especially old is it looks like it's typewriter. It's a nice big chart, all dotted. <coughs> they gave you three choices, DMC, Anchor, and Coats. And um, this is all I bought DMC for it. And they don't even talk about, they, the only fabric they talk about is 14, 16, or 18 count Ada. So apparently this is done on white Ada. Boring. <laughs> what did I buy? I bought Hushabai Peach, 30 count r and &R. Now, am I gonna do this on Hushabai Peach? I don't know, but I think what this would look great on Hushabai Peach. I'm not sure. After I bought it, I said, wow, um, Hush of My Peach isn't a peach color. It's like a, it's like a pink color. I want anybody to give me an opinion on what they think, if they think that this would look good on Hush of My Peach. It, I could put this on a um, more of an antique -y fabric. A bluish fabric might look good. I don't know. But making stuff your own means you pick the fabric that you think would look the best. Hushabai Peach is very, very nice. This is a nice piece of it. It's 22 by 22. Um, so I am going to use DMC. There's way too many colors not to. But I'm not sure about the fabric. But again, making things your own, which means sometimes you make errors, just like I picked the wrong color, I picked the wrong, um, I picked the wrong color on one, 
I picked the wrong fabric and another. And so I look at this and I say, I'm going to look through my stash and see if I have a big enough piece and think about it. And if not, I'm going to have to buy a piece, which drives me crazy because I have so much of something that this will go on. I'm thinking the peach might work. I hate starting it on there and then deciding, but sometimes that's what you got to do. The peach certainly will be interesting. This fabric I thought might look good too. Hold on one second while I get you. Ugh. Hate to walk away, but this is the Sue Hillis Florida, Florida sampler. By the way, unbelievably beautiful frame and framed perfectly by the cross stitch cupboard. <laughs> okay. But this is an R and R discontinued fabric. It's and I thought and I changed out the colors on this too, but there weren't that many. Um, you know, and I like this fabric. If I could find this fabric, I would also do that one on a similar one. So I don't know. Anyway, may, I might have picked the wrong fabric for this, but luckily I didn't start it. But just a, just as a thing. It's okay to pick fabric and, and change things out. You're never stuck. This is a hobby, remember? All right, finally today, we have two ornament issues. One is the 2019 Just Cross Stitch Halloween, which just recently came out. And the 2008 Special Christmas Issue for Ornaments. I will tell you that some of the older editions of Just Cross Stitch had designers that I like better. I'm not talking about the 1980s edition. I'm talking about the 2000s. Um, but anyway, that'll be your judge. So let's go through both of them. First, we'll go through the 2019 collector's uh, edition of Just Cross Stitch. I'm going to show you the projects in here. This one is by Ol Olesia Novo Hilova, and it's called Halloween Crow. This one is called Nevermore by Stitchy Fitch Designs, Lee Fisher. And I don't really know these designers, but um, they're kind of cute, but neither one or something I'm going to do. This one I loved. Lion Cat by DeSelby. I really love that one. <laughs> Charlotte's Web by Charlotte Smith. A lot of open space in there. I don't know. That Charlotte's, the, I'm sorry, the Flying Cat one, by the way, it's all DMC. I don't think it looks too hard to do. Per perfectly Haunted by Fairy Wool in the Woods. I think it's awesome because he's dreaming of fish. <laughs> Isn't that cute? This one I absolutely love. This is Halloween Butterfly by Alessia Novos Hilova. Halloween Butterfly. But that is cool. That's a really good one. I should put a, put a sticky mark. This is called Making a Brew by Doreen Jones. This is actually a large, there's a lot of colors here and a lot of back stitching. It's not something I'm gonna make, but you can notice it's, it's really beautiful. Kind of nice how they have three different sizes there. You certainly could just make one or the other. And that's like a monster theme. This one is called uh, Halloween Bookmark by Julia Lucas. This one is by Nikki's Creations. It's called Sheepish, Sheepish Pin Cushions. Of course, it has a Halloween themed sheep. This one is called Trick or Treat Couple by Lacey Flowers. This one is called the Candy Corn Treat Jar Wrap by Kimberly Tyree. 
nice, huh? I actually like that a lot. To put that around the candle, I think. This one's called Bootyful Halloween by Karen Kluba. Looks like her designs. Very nice. I like the tree with the acorns on it. I think that in a spooky fabric, that would be really cool. This one's something different. This is called Snake Eyes Bracelet by Kathleen Berlou. Hey, bracelet. How do they make the bracelet? One Stitchable Cuff by DMC. There you go. This one's called Witch Soup, and it's by Susanna Lima. Once again, the white Ada does not do anything for me. I, my question to Just Cross Stitch is why not show designs that are on more interesting fabrics? This is uh, Booyah All by Franny Ritter. Franny Ritter apparently does a lot of Halloween designs because <laughs> that's all I've seen her do. And there's a whole bunch in here. That one's called Booyah All. These are family, um, once again, Kathleen Berlou, uh, family ornaments, fright ornaments. There's two pages of them. Those. Those. I'm trying not to show you the charts, but this one is by Lee Fisher, Stitchy Fish, um, called I Get Wrapped Up in Halloween. This is absolutely gorgeous. This one is called Tunnel of Trees. Now, before I show it to you, every year we go to Halloween Horrors at Universal Studios. Halloween Horrors is awesome if you've never done it. A lot of kids, I know I'm feeling like the mother there, but <laughs> there's, there's people of all ages. There's definitely some older people there too, and I don't consider myself old. I guess I'm sort of in the middle, but it's so fun. They've got haunted houses. They've got people walking around in elaborate costumes. They've got scare zones, which are at, at, at Universal Studios, which are streets of New York that are all spooky and done out with creepy things. They've got one area that has very large oak trees that's got to walk through and they put all this great stuff in the trees. Um, beautiful lights and light. At one, one time they had all these jack-o'-lanterns up in the trees. And it's really dark and spooky. And that's what this reminds me of, the Tunnel of Trees. And this one is by Elizabeth Spurlock. This is awesome. And they showed it on great purple fabric. Not white Ada, but this is just darling. I love it. That would take a long time to do. Um, and the fabric is Blue Spruce Cashel by Zwigart, which is blue. thought it was purple, but it's blue. And it's all DMC. It's got a lot of colors. Dark and Stormy, a bookmark by Kathleen Berlou. I have seen people doing bookmarks this year. Is reading back? That would be nice. I don't read a lot of books. It's sad, but I just don't. Um, I should. Read magazines. I read stuff for my for my uh, like licensure. I do read books sometimes, but not a lot. These are by Franny Ritters. These are uh, treat tabs. There's more. Okay, this is a, a jam-packed issue. Get a lot for your money. I love this one. This one's called Rustic Halloween by Roveras. What I really like is her finishing. See, they finally show stuff that's got great finishing. Number one, it's nice fabric. Number two, the finishing is really nice. I like this one a lot. And I like how it's long and skinny. It's a different size. They make wide, um, what do you call that? Like wide strips of fabric, linen, linen fabric. Oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, um, they're long pieces that, that actually come in rolls. And that would be perfect for this. This is uh, Mocha Vintage Edinburgh, and it's all DMC. Halloween Haunts, it's the next section. This is 
cute. This is Halloween Hand by Primitive Acorn. This is done on Jobelin. It's a Halloween chicken. <laughs> this is by Pickle Barrel. Uh, this is done on lamb's wool linen. White shell lamb's wool. This one is Fairy Wool in the Wood, Home Sweet Haunted Home. I happen to like this one too. I like the fabric. I like the, once again, nice finishing. I like the little pom-poms. Fabric is Vintage Country Mocha from Sweetgard. Halloween Log Cabin Quilt by Always Time to Stitch. That's pretty awesome, right? Welcome to My Haunted Home by Medina Originals. It's all wording, all lettering. I think what would make this one much more interesting to me would be vintage buttons, spooky black, just spooky buttons. That would make it much more interesting, maybe some spooky lace, or just something. And this is Tea Stained Even Weave from Medina Originals. I've never heard of Medina fabric. I'm going to look it up. But I think that could be made a lot more interesting than just some letters. But that's the whole vintage cross-stitch niche, is taking things and changing them. <laughs> so this is Boutique by Pickle Barrel. Once again, I think this could be with some embellishments. might look a little bit more interesting, but it is cute. It's almost like a little Halloween sampler. And that one's done on Lamb's Wool by White Shell. Nancy Greenberg Pickle Barrel Designs, The Witching Hour. Awfully cute. Um, then we've got uh, another book, Bark, Charles Craft book, more called Spellbinding by Elizabeth Spurlock. Another bookmark. Then we've got Gone Batty by L.S. Porter. It's a designer I've never heard of, actually, but it is cute. Once again, the finishing is nice on this. As you see, this is actually done on a container, it says. This is done on straw by Weeks Dye Works. And the container finishing is black round treasure box from Yarn Tree. So it's actually very pretty. Another interesting one, Franny, Riv Franny Ritter on Carrot Linen by Weeks Dye Works called Kick, it up, Kick Up Your Heels. That is nice, nice Weeks Linen. It's called Carrot. So now they're getting into some nicer linens. I guess that they, they want to do all tastes. This is by Faith Works. This one's called To Market, To Market. We getting to the end? <laughs> it's a lot. Um, this is Ghost Party Treat Bag. Uh, I thought this was awesome. It's actually uh, done on some sort of bag, but I like the way they did the white ghost. I thought the white ghost is actually sort of the white feathers down here was very nice. How is that done? Is that done on a lightweight feasible interfacing, pretty finished tote bag? Yeah, they mounted it on the tote bag. Pretty cool. This was a really nice one. This one is by Evdokia Nikoleva. It's called Spooky Stitching. I love this. And, the, and it's hand-dyed Linda from Zweigart. That is a actually very cool one. Once again, I think it needs more finishing. I think it needs some mini pom-poms around it, some, something that goes around the edges to finish it, but I think it's awesome. That's probably my favorite one in the whole book. All Hallows Eve by Franny Ritter. This one's done on Ada. Um, uh, Sweet Little Witch Ornament by Hand Blessings. Uh, by Evdokia Nikoleva. This is called Spiderweb Mandala. I like it's nice colors. Um, Will of the Wisp by Elizabeth Spurlock. This is very pretty, and this is done on thistle cashel linen from Picture This Plus. Finally, nice linen. <laughs> I think that's actually very beautiful. 
This is a really pretty one. I bet you done up this. This probably doesn't do it justice. It's a big project. It's absolutely beautiful. It's done in DMC with Krennic. I've got some big projects and small projects. This one is Midnight, Midnight Seance by Pickle Barrel. Look, finally, nice finishing. That's great finishing. See how much more interesting this one looks than just plain? And the finishing, they even talk about finishing. It's done with glitter trims and rhinestones and batting and spiderweb. Felt spiderweb charger. So apparently, doesn't say where she got it from, but apparently, I don't know where you'd get that, the charger, but it's great. Elizabeth Spurlock called Black Cat Bookmark. Another bookmark. This is full of bookmarks. Very cute. These are all pre-finished bookmarks. They're all um, Charles Craft. This one is Witch's Brew. No, actually, I missed one. This is Spooky Boo's, um, Spooky Boo's Halloween Drum by Praiseworthy Stitches. They did a beautiful job on this. This is nice finishing, too. That's actually very, very cute. So they, did a, they stuck a drum in here. This is Witch's Brew by Kathleen Berlou. It's a, once again, very nice fabric. Uh, picture this ha plus haunted. The fabric makes this. Imagine making this thing on this project on White Ada. It just wouldn't look right. Look how much nicer it looks on that fabric. Really awesome fabric. That would look good on this fabric. This is that uh, heart stitch thread fabric. It would look great on it. Um, this is another great finish. This one is called Fun with Pumpkins by uh, Gula Manfredi. Man. Manfredini. Sorry, and if I butcher your name, I am sorry. Done on some sort of, I'll tell you in a minute, some sort of box. That's cute. It's beautiful finishing. What is the box? The box is clamping. Oh, it's a, it's a wood box by Lone Elm Lane. I love Lone Elm Lane stuff. Her boxes are not cheap, but they are handmade. They are of extremely high quality, and they're beautiful. But they're not cheap, but you can you can find them. Um, the Cross Stitch Cupboard sells all her boxes. You can get them on her website, and I guess a few other places, I don't know. This is Trick or Treat Designs. I'm just going to show you them all because they're all on one page, all by Pickle Barrel. Trick or, uh, one, uh, trick or Treat, I'm here for booze, witchy way, jack-o'-lantern, and candy corn. It's all self-explanatory, just to show you. It's all on one page by Pickle Barrel. I think you can figure out which one is which. Okay. Next is Halloween Campfire by Cross Stitch Sanctuary, done on Charcoal Zweigart. This would look really great on that Haunted Linen by Picture This Plus. But that's real pretty. It's like, again, another little sampler. That's a nice project. I think that would make a nice pillow. A great finishing. Some of this is finished nicely. This is done on um, 30 count pumpkin linen from Weeks Style Works, and it's called the Booze Brothers. And it's great finishing. I love how they put fabric on both sides. That's great. And uh, what do they put around the edge? It's like something fuzzy. It says chenille. Just neat. That's, and that's great fabric. Just look at the fabric. I just want you to Take note of that fabric. It's kind of cool. It's like poisons. <laughs> what kind of fabric is it? it? Does it say? It doesn't say the fabric brand, but it's very cool. This is a box made by Natalia Luneva. As you can see, you make this box and put it together into a little house, a haunted house. Um, done with. Um, Just black Linda even weave, and there's a lot of finishing instructions. I'm not going to go through that. Is that the last project? I think it is. Let's see. Nope. This is Better Give Candy by Jennifer Rodriguez. Done on like a box finish. 
And this is Halloween bookmark by Nikki, Nikki's Creations. Um, this is a prim bookmark. I actually like this a lot. That's one of her signature linens, the Vichy linen. The Vichy linen comes in different colors, by the way. <laughs> Just to let you know, it's not all the same. Anyway, um, let's go over the old magazine. I know this takes time, but I think this is, this is great because you'll see these projects in these magazines and maybe you'll go look for it. These old issues are out there. 2008, just cross-stitch. Just comparing, the paper's about the same. I think this is a little shinier paper. I think this is a little heavier, of course. But a lot more ads in here, just to let you know. 2008 Ornaments Collection. Let me see if they, yeah, they do this. On each page, they do the, something about the, about the designer and they give the chart, but they don't give the picture. The pictures are all given at once. So we've got Legacy Designs, La Di Da, Blackbird, Fancy Work, Cherish Stitches, Moss Creek, Hands to Work, and Sweetheart Tree. Just in case you're wondering, the Blackbird is adorable on this one. I'm going to show you all of them. And go, oh, we'll probably just, I can't possibly tell you. It's hard. I have to flip back and forth, but these are awesome. Um, the Blackbird one, I believe is number three, Blackbird Designs. That is cute. That's a cute ornament. So why Blackbird Designs is in these old ones and not in the new, I don't know. Um, I like this one too, number four. It's by Fancy Work, Adeste Files. Beautiful. Which one is the Lottie Da one? Two. That's cute too. This is the Lottie Da one. I, I'm going to just, of course, focus on my favorite designers. I tend to do that. Now we've got the another ornaments collection. This is more of the um, of the uh, you know uh, the outdoorsy ones, the uh, snowman ones. Val stuff, Mosey and Me, Sam Sarah, Victoria Sam Victoria Sampler, Casey, Buon Gorio, Country Cottage Needleworks, M Designs, and Primrose. Uh, just to show you, my favorite is probably uh, this one down here. It's my favorite. And my favorite one is number eight, which is by Primrose Works, called You'll Rejoice. I like that one. There's more on this page, too. It's harder to show these. The newer ones, at least, they, they make it easier. <laughs> Christmas ornament collection. Uh, ones by Blue, Ris Rib Blue Ribbon Designs, Elizabeth Designs, Prairie Schooler, Simple Stitches, Julia Lucas, Angel Stitches, Victoria Sampler, and Shepherd's Bush. My favorite one on this page is number three, which is by the Prairie Schooler. Uh, snowy night. So just to show you my favorite snowy night is that one. That's Prairie Schooler. If you have questions below, because it's hard to really go back and forth so many times and tell you what's what, um, just put the uh, put your question below. That's got to be by Victoria Sampler, the little house one. It's all that's awfully cute. And if you want to do a house and want to do a small one, that's a good idea. Let me just double check. That number seven house is by Victoria Sampler. Next page is a red theme. DeBee's Designs, Full Circle, My Big Toe, Stitching with Susan, Jeanette Douglas, Nordic Needle, uh, Nordic Needle, Glory B, Cindy Valentine's. Okay, so my favorite on this page is definitely number two, which is Full Circle Designs called A Christmas Song. But let's look at all of them. So let me, I'll focus on my, that's my favorite. That one right there. But look. Look. 
just to talk about some of the more uh, Nordic needle, of course. Uh, not the Nordic one. It's seven is glory B. That's cute. Um, the my big toe is three, which is that piece one. Jeanette Douglas is number five. It's cute in the little frame. That's Jeanette Douglas, in case you're wondering. Okay. Next. This one is, doesn't say, it doesn't name, it doesn't name these. Nowadays they name the groupings, but this one doesn't. Courtney Collection, Scandinavian Stitches, Homespun, homespun Elegance, Imaginating, WeWorks, Ink Circles, Sue Hillis, and The Work Basket. And my favorite, without matching them up, is number seven, which is Sue Hillis. So we'll show you that Sue Hillis. Very, very cute. Here's a bunch of others. Try to go as slow as I can. Once again, you have questions about any of these, let me know. Next page. Wildflower Stitchery. Charlotte's Collectibles, Little House Needleworks, Prairie Moon, Midsummer Night Designs, Serendipity, and JBW. Without matching, I could tell you which one is my favorite. It's JBW Designs. It's the Angel Tree. I love it. So let me show you this. I love it. That one right there. But here's the rest. That is awfully nice too. All of them. I like her. <laughs> um, Prairie Moon is a sought after designer because it's all out of print now. Just to let you know which one is the Prairie Moon, it's number four, which is this one. That's the Prairie Moon. Um, Monster Bubbles, Lizzie Kate, My Mark, The Sunflower Seed, Little by Little, Bright Needle, and Milady's Needle. My favorite one here is number seven, Milady's Needle, just to show you. That is cute. But here's the others. That's, that's kind of elaborate. Modern looking, mid-century modern, but I say modern. Not reviewing every fabric, because I'd have to go through every page, but if I see an interesting fabric, number one is the only fabric that doesn't look like a basic fabric. So number one is, I don't know, I'd have to go through the whole thing, so I can't, I can't do it, but. Another page, Forget-Me-Nots, Cross-Eyed Cricket, Patricia Anna, Loopy Lou, Charlotte's Web, Needle Play, and Rosewood Manor. And my favorite out of all of these is, of course, I will honor Christmas in my heart and keep it all year. I am the Dickens fan. And who does that one? That's number one. Number one is Forget Me Not in Stitchery. But here's the rest. Most of these are done on planar fabrics, absolutely, because we didn't have the proliferation of the amazing fabrics as we do right now. This is 2000 and 2008. Oh, these are some cool ones. Thistle Threads, Gemini Designs, Heart Strings, Charlin Designs, Raise the Roof, Dragon Dreams, and the Stitch Works. My favorite, I think my favorite is the beaver, which is number two, Gemini Designs. So let's look at the beaver. <laughs> it's so cute. But you can see them all. Which one is the raise the roof one? That's partially Teresa Vinay. Let's see. Or Vinette, I don't know how you pronounce her name. That one is number five, which is this guy. It's Teresa Vedette's design. There's some awesome stuff in here. 
This is Gentle, next page, Gentle Pursuit, Erica Michaels, Cat's Whiskers, Ladybug Lane, Kitty and Me, Brita Cup Designs, Amy Bruken, and Knotted Tree. And my favorite out of all of these is number six, which is Brita Cup Designs. So I'll show you my favorite is that one. There's something about it. I just like it sort of retro. Pretty nice. Some of these finishes are cute. They've got some nice little ways. Um, now it's, is that it? There's a, uh, there's a whole lot of stuff on designers. So I'm just gonna thumb through it. And uh, the, the recipes are here. There's a recipe for Cherry Delight, Pecan Shortbread. I'm just gonna go through these and see if I can show you some pictures of maybe some more of the common designers that you guys would, the most popular designers that you guys might wanna know. Cross-Eyed Cricket, cricket Vic, Vicky Hastings. Um, it's her family picture here. Uh, Debbie Rowley. Let's just, I'm just thumbing through this. Elizabeth's Designs. Erica Michael, Linda Stoltz. That's a cool picture. She's got, like, that looks like an old picture. It's a beach picture with people that you can barely see. <laughs> but, let's see. Her recipe is lemon whippersnappers. Just going through this. Um, anyway, I'm just going through this. See if there's anybody that, anything interesting. Homespun, homespun elegant Sandra Sullivan, if you want to see. That was her picture from 2008. I like her stuff. And her recipe was Aunt Jenny's white fruit cake. Ink circles, Jeanette. Jeanette Douglas, here's a nice picture of her. That her recipe was, oh, let's see. I don't see her recipe. Did you, did Jeanette leave a recipe? She didn't. Um, somebody here's got a recipe for Christmas. That's dash of planning, a, t a teaspoon spontaneity, a tablespoon of sentimental reflection, a cup of laughter, a quart of love, and a gallon of patience. What a great recipe. <laughs> and who, who did that one? That is by uh, Julia Lucas. That's creative. I like that. Legacy designs, little by little, just going through this. La Dida, this is Lori Markovic. It's her picture. And her recipe is, did she not do a recipe? She did do a recipe. I guess not everybody submitted one. Let's see, little by little, legacy designs, little house needleworks, Diane Williams. I would imagine that's her as a little girl. You can see it, I hope. <laughs> I would imagine that's her as a little girl. And she did not leave a recipe either. Lizzie Kate, um, I guess that's her and her daughters. Did Lizzie Kate leave a recipe? Sugar cookies. Okay, she left a recipe. Loopy Lou, M Designs, Midsummer's Night, Milady's Needle, Gloria Moore. Did she do a recipe? Her recipe is nothing. She didn't do a recipe. Mosey and Me, Moss Creek, My Big Toe, Debbie Booth. Debbie Booth, My Big Toe, that must be her daughter. <laughs> And uh, her recipe is chocolate silk pie. Her stuff is very religious. I really do. I love it. I love her stuff. Uh, needle play, Nordic needle, Patricia Ann. Just going through this prairie moon. This is the prairie moon. And uh, her recipe is for jello salad. Here's the prairie schooler. 2008 picture. Prairie schooler recipe is white bean chili. Primrose, raise the roof. I don't know who this picture is of, just to let you know. I don't think that's true. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody knows who in raise the roof that picture is of, whose kids 
or the, is it does that look it looks like an old old picture so it's probably one of them and their recipe is nothing they didn't leave a recipe here's Karen Kluba I guess with her husband and her recipe is German pancakes and that I love I'm gonna have to try the recipe Scandinavian serendipity simple stitches I know I hope you're not bored Sue Hillis she looks exactly the same now as she did then Sue Hillis and her recipe is once again she didn't leave one sunflower seeds sweetheart tree thistle fowls Victoria sampler here you go she looks pretty much the same <laughs> and um, did she leave a recipe I would hope she would let's see did she nope she did not um anyway so there's a lot of finishing instructions i'm just going to show you something shop list that was then shop list all the advertisers is there another page and there were lots more okay this is just the small advertising they had and they have advertising throughout let's look at today's shop list That's it. And obviously they're not all in here because um, the cross stitch cupboard is, but they don't think so. And there's less advertising in here. So that tells you something. Anyway, this has been long enough. So here's, we have some almost finishes, some almost starts, some vintage finds, some magazines, some other stuff. I'm looking around my table. Did I leave anything out? No. Anyway, enjoy your Sunday from my house to yours. Please keep stitching.